In the A Song of Ice and Fire novels, Anise was the first son of Aegon the Conqueror and Queen Rhinus, before she died fighting in Dawn. Maegor, meanwhile, was the son and only child of Queen Visenya, Aegon's other sister wife, making him Aenys's half brother. George R. R. Martin made Targaryen dynasty names by mix and matching different name elements. Air, in, Aegon, Aemon, Aemond, Arian, etc. And the suffix, nys, from, Rhinus, less clearly, Viserys, and, Daenerys. In universe, Aenys's name is apparently simply a combination of his parents' names, Aegon, and, Ray nys, yielded, Air nys. It is pronounced like both elements in his parents' names, Aenys, but not, Aenus. Aenys was considered to be a weakling. He was as tall as his father but softer looking, slender and frail. He was very sickly as a child. His mother Rhinus died when he was only three years old, which deeply traumatized him. He grew somewhat stronger and more confident after bonding to his dragon Quicksilver, progeny of the original three dragons brought to Westeros during the conquest. Like his mother, Aeneas enjoyed court life and was a great patron of the arts. He was dabbler in poetry and alchemy, though not much of an academic. Nonetheless he was quite charming on a personal level at court, in contrast with his brutish younger half-brother. He wore his hair long down to his shoulders, curled into ringlets and perfumed. He also had a thin silky moustache and beard, well manicured to come to a fine point, described as a three musketeers, look by Martin. He wore a large gold crown much bigger than his father's simple band of Valyrian steel interlaid with large square-cut rubies. Despite being a courtier, he was not very charismatic in times of actual crisis, as those around him became disgusted at his weak will and indecision. He had a nervous smile, as if anxious and eager to please those around him. Anise wasn't a completely foppish incompetent, this reputation became somewhat exaggerated over time. He did well enough at jousting and feats of arms not to embarrass himself. He wasn't just tripping over his sword, but he was only adequate, in contrast with the great legacy of his father. Anise might have made a decent enough caretaker king if he had inherited the throne in a time of peace. He may not have been a great statesman but he wasn't outright insane, like Ares II, a religious buffoon, like Baelor I, or a cruel tyrant, as Magor later became. The Targaryen dynasty was still young, however, and needed a forceful king to cement its status, and Aeneas failed to rise to the occasion. Because Aegon I didn't want to antagonize the faith, he tacitly agreed not to continue the Targaryen custom of incestuous marriage. Combined with the fact that Aegon simply never produced any daughters, he made Aeneas wed Alyssa Velaryon as a political marriage, she was still a cousin given that the Targaryens had frequently intermarried with the Velaryons, but cousin marriage isn't considered incest in Westeros. Aeneas and Alyssa had three sons and two daughters, who in order were, Rhyna, Aegon, Viserys, Jaerys, and Alazan. Their sixth and final child was a daughter named Viella, but she died in the cradle. The construction of the Red Keep took many years and Aegon I only lived to see the foundations set, instead he spent much of his long reign on royal progresses across Westeros with an itinerant court, knitting together his newly forged kingdom. He kept Denise by his side at his mobile royal court, while Magor stayed behind on Dragonstone.